Hello, friends. Welcome to the Artist Journey Podcast. I'm your host, Elliot Graber. And today we are meeting with my co-host, Mr. Landon Banks, the one and only, and Mr. Polly B. MN, the artist, and um, he goes by Paul Benson with his legal name. So I'm just going to get these guys on in here. Hey, there's Paul. How's it going, buddy? Hey, how's it going, man? Good, man. Good to see you. You too. <laughs> Ooh, I like your swag there. You're, you're looking all uh, hip. <laughs> Maroon, yeah. Maroon. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite colors for sure. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we're all here. Cool. So, guys, I'm just going to get us in. Uh, I'm going to go live on the Facebook. All right. You guys ready? Can you yeah. hear me okay? I can hear you great, man. Can you hear me all right? Yay. Woo. All hear each other, see each other. Rock and roll. All right, I'm gonna go live uh, and then Paul, I'm just gonna reintroduce you, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. Hello, 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 my friends. How are we doing hello. today? Uh, welcome to Facebook Live. Uh, this is the Artist Journey Podcast. I'm your host, Elliot Graber, with my co-host, Landon Banks, the one and only. Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Thanks for joining us tonight. We have a fun... Uh, podcast with you tonight with our good friend Paul Benson aka Paul BMN Polly BMN yeah there you go you got it yes welcome thank you I'm overjoyed to join you gentlemen well, we are honored to have you thank you so much <laughs> oh so Paul tell us all about yourself how how did you come to be here in this uh wild world of this podcast <laughs> um well i was born in november um so i think my parents probably uh it was a valentine's day baby situation i think is what was going on here <laughs> and then a couple of years later i met you elliot um at a place we're living together and you got me onto last summer's love project as audio dude the audio guy and now I'm here. Long story short. <laughs> yeah, that was that brings up to now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul, you really awesome. you really stepped in last minute there with that project, and we just met each other sort of random, and it just turned out yeah. that we were ne next door neighbors. It was so wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a very fun project. Um, my first opportunity to really be the the person we responsible for audio more than anyone on a project besides stuff I work on just solo. So that was great. Uh -oh. Awesome. Now, if I recall correctly, weren't you, Elliot, weren't you up um, on the roof at your place <laughs> and being like, dear God, I need a sound engineer, please. I need one. And then in walks Polly and you're like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, I'm a sound engineer. And you're like, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> did it and really go like that? It really, yeah, it really did. It was like an answer to prayer. I was like, dear God, I need a sound engineer like today. And because wow. Paul, wasn't it like a week and a half or something that you jumped on board before the show, I thought? Pretty much. Yeah. I'd say two weeks at most. Two weeks. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And then, wow, how prophetic was that? <laughs> you also asked for a million dollars in this prayer too, right, Elliot? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you oh. meant Paul. Yeah, no. uh, yeah, Paul's like, give me Did you a get it? that will give me a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for that part of it to happen, but. Ask and you yeah. shall receive, right? <laughs> residuals, it's residuals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, it, it yeah, start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> From the making of the album. The soundtrack album. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it was wild though. Like Paul and I, we we went to Metro Sound and Lights here in Minneapolis, like I don't know, ten times or something like that. Just <laughs> That's, trying to pick up. That is it. exaggerated. <laughs> Felt like it. Felt like it. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. And Paul stepped in and he did a, a great job. And and uh, yeah, and here we are. And uh, so Paul, you are uh, a multifaceted performer and recording artist. Um, but tell us. Yeah, man specifically like what is it that you that you do or like what style do you like to write in what would you like classify your genre of music yeah i would say it is 
primarily self-expression and self anything you other word you would want to call it and the rest are kind of labels that you have to pick up to find people who want to listen to that um mm. like the majority of songs i've written i would say are just personal experience personal feelings stories experiences I said that twice yeah. yeah um poetry i like to write poetry or writing exercises um mm -hmm. so yeah turning uh -huh. turning my life taking all life experience kind of pulling it into one place and then putting it back out so oh, i love that i love that do you find that some of your best work writing wise comes from the personal experiences that you've had yourself yeah absolutely um yes i think that's the basis for a lot of the vision I have of where I want to go with a project or a song. Um, and I also find that when it is time to actually record those things, um, being in that emotion or calling that emotion to bear as a tool will make the recording so much better than if you were, it's like the difference between reliving a story and just hearing about it, you know, it's two mm -hmm. different things so much more relatable as well to yeah. the audience and the listener. Yep. Yep. Oh, awesome. I was listening to some of your music on Spotify this morning while preparing for our podcast tonight. Yeah. And I just, I love your, uh, your rhyme scheme and the quick, fast, catchy lyrics. Um, when you sit down to write a song, uh, I know we've talked to other artists and they're like, well, I, I spend Monday writing a song. Um, and like, I know when I write lyrics to a song, like I have to be like inspired and then it just flows out of me. Um, how, do, how does your writing process go, Polly? Um, do you, you know, write a certain day of the week or a certain time of the day, or do you just like see something or um, feel something? And you're like, oh my gosh, this is a song that's coming out of me right now. Yeah, I think if it, I'll talk about like in the moment stuff second, mm. but first, if I have some saved up, be it just like time in life, I find is really helpful. Uh, if you just don't write anything for a while and go live and come back, I like to mm -hmm. do that. Mm. Um, and sometimes that's not a conscious choice. It's just how it is. So that's part of it for me. Um, but yeah, earlier, like I said, if I have poems or a new breakup, which is rare, but in high school more frequently, those are good ways to get song material. And then this past week, I moved into a new place fairly recently. So Congratulations. Been, yeah, thank you. That's been helpful. Just what? new scenery is always good. Um, mm -hmm. One of my roommates makes beats. Oh, so we're working light. together. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then if it's in the moment, I find that I am a really zoned in worker. Um, and I can go into that a lot more, but the flow state is something that I use. Um, I just ride it until I look up and it's been three hours and my eyes are tired and I need to eat something for the day. But I have that luxury right now because I'm not taking classes till next month. Okay. So, from like, I don't know, get up at 11 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. <laughs> 11 a.m. <laughs> get up at midnight, right oh, till man. noon. <laughs> no, get up at 11 a.m. ish, have a nice slow breakfast, and then come back or in brunch. here and or brunch, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then just sit down and work for two, three hours. You can get a lot done that way if you have the luxury, which I don't always do. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're writing, Polly, do you start with um, like lyrics first or your beats first, the music? Um, what, what do you prefer and what do you start with first when you're sitting down in the moment writing a song? Almost always beats now. Okay. Yeah, I'd say 90% of the time. Before? Was it lyrics before or? Yeah, I think it was because um, the way I started 
knowing that I could even rap was from freestyling with friends. And that was mm. always to free beats on YouTube, which okay. are a, a great, which are something that should be respected more. I think there's a lot of really good music just being put out every day for free by people who are hustling as producers. Mm -hmm. So that would always be lyrics focused because I couldn't make a beat at all. But okay. as and, I about, to make beats. and about how many years ago was this that you discovered that you had this ability to uh, rap and freestyle. Was this something you've been doing your entire life or is it just something you found out you had this gift and this talent recently? Um, not so recently, I would say. I think um, a lot of the signs were there, if you think that's mm -hmm. a thing. Um, I read a ton as a kid, just eating books mm -hmm. every day all the time so that was helpful for someone if you need vocabulary and words to think mm -hmm. of later in life yes but the freestyling itself uh, i would say probably six years ago now maybe seven okay. almost but probably oh, six awesome. yeah one of the things that always impressed me about you paul is uh how you could just free you know flow with language in a free uh free format just like on the spot it's 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 really impressive to to watch yeah and, and well, thank I, you I, I appreciate like how you can um just really speak your mind like the truth in the moment whatever it is and you don't mm. have any sort of like judgment or uh contrived you know intention about it it's literally just whatever flows through your you know, yeah. brain <laughs> yeah. kind of comes out through through your your lyric. It's really really fascinating. Much like a prophet or a poet, I would say. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That's that's very cool to hear. Very nice of you to say. Yeah. yeah. So, so like um, now you were talking about like your beats, right? Uh, when you create music, do you create the beats first on like you know your software programs or uh, what? What do you? Yeah, do? I use I use Ableton. I started Ableton probably a year and a half ago by now, maybe two years. And, hmm. uh, but it was probably the easiest thing I've ever learned as far as things I've learned that are software, uh, which was very validating for me and super freeing. And it expanded my, uh, my arsenal, I guess, so much as far as creativity oh. and expression, because you go from trying to find beats that someone else has made that might fit you, and some of them definitely can, to figuring out your own style and what suits you and that's a whole other journey but um dare i say it's an artist journey yes <laughs> yeah, <but Those>, anyway. <laughs> can you explain to us Polly, what those who are unfamiliar with ableton can you explain to those uh, yeah. us what that is? ableton is a digital audio workstation or a daw and other ones you may have heard of are logic pro tools audacity is a free one GarageBand is a very simple DAW. They all count, but you they have a bunch of sounds in them and you make music, essentially. Mm -hmm. You arrange mm -hmm. them and yeah, it's composition, but- Get your beat on. <laughs> exactly, it's composition, but it's all within your computer's um, software. Okay. And then you can awesome. get external controllers. That's MIDI. So you can- you can take your real instrumental talents if you have any, which you don't have to. And awesome. Make music so you with really it. don't necessarily have to be a musician in the old fashioned sense of playing no. the piano or picking up a guitar and learning how to play the guitar is what you're, you're saying essentially, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, if you guys hadn't heard about that yet, I got <laughs> something to tell you because the production process is been changing for a long time but mm -hmm. i think it's still true today but yes you're correct for sure awesome and do, what do you prefer more do you prefer writing the lyrics or do you prefer writing the beats or do they both hold a special place for you uh what, what's your preference with that yeah often i think of them as separate things um i can make I, would do, I can and do make many more beats than songs worth of lyrics. Mm -hmm. Lyrics take some time for me because I usually do them in the moment now and mm -hmm. I'll work through a song rather than 
having a full song ready that needs, you know, having a full lyrics ready that needs a song. It's having a song or a beat that need lyrics to be spaced mm. into it instead. Mm -hmm. So interesting. I I like them both, but um, so they're separate often, and sometimes they happen together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, awesome. Like uh, when you record your demos, Paul, do you um, do you go piece by piece, like a verse and a chorus? Do you you know yep. record it live in the moment with the beat then, and and then, or can you get through a whole song in one or two takes and just? Mm, you know, usually it's piece by piece, and I think there's multiple reasons for that. One, you can really, um, you can really feel like you're attacking each piece of the song with intention, which I think is helpful for someone like me who hasn't been trained professionally with any breathing or singing, etc. So it's more at your own pace. You don't have to have the lungs to go all the way. But I would like to learn more and develop technique for going longer and connecting verses because mm -hmm. if your editing isn't quite up to snuff, you can definitely tell that a person, okay, I did this part and then I stopped and then I did this part and it, even if it's not obvious, you could still changes how you listen to something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going mm -hmm. to... Um school here coming this year yeah. right in, yeah ipr in IPR, minneapolis yeah. Yeah. which is the institute for production and recording i'm doing a yes i'll give you guys the uh the relatives and strangers information sentences it's in minneapolis it's a two-year applied science degree and the degree is audio production and live sound together cool Oh, well, it's awesome. a fantastic program from what I've un yeah. understood. Uh, it's, it's one of the best. I am, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. I think um, it's hard to it's hard to know what something's going to be like before you do it, which isn't a radical thing to say. But like meeting you, Elliot, and just saying yes to things, um, saying yes to IPR, I think is going to be just as good as meeting you and then uh, not that you can really compare these things, but it's going to be good. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Well, let's hope, it, let's hope it is. The whole yeah. institution has to be. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, that, Paul. True. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Congratulations on your upcoming start there. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, Paul. I uh, had my own experience with IPR um, back in 2007. Um, yeah. They started, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they started... Um, to do films there as mm -hmm. part of their program. And I was in the very first film they did called Check, Please. It was a little vignette about a boyfriend and girlfriend together that break up and they go on all these random, crazy, odd, strange dates. And I was um, I was one of those in one of those vignettes and I had all these phobias and I had to learn all these like really, really long words. And oh, yeah. I was really interesting uh to do that and coincidentally when um the movie is called check please and that was the first time that i ever saw myself up on the big screen when they premiered that movie at the old suburban world theater in uptown almost 14 years ago now but so ipr wow. home very special place in my heart because they put me on yeah. a 40 40 screen and i'm like oh my gosh that's that's a <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I mean, thank you. I think you uh, you picked a great place. So, yeah. Yeah. it used to be called uh, Music Tech College, right? Didn't it used to have a different name? I thought. You know, I am not well versed on the lore there. Yeah, you'll have to ask because I remember getting when I was in high school, my senior year, I'd get uh, in the mail Music Tech College, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure it was the same program before it switched to IPR. But I could be. You have to do some research on that. <laughs> I will. Maybe it's in like the archives or something. Yeah, yeah. I, Sounds I'm a real dusty. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kicking myself. <laughs> I wish I would have gone. You know. Um, wow. And here in the Twin Cities, we also uh, well, McNally Smith uh, use was a, a great um, recording uh, program. Um, yeah, I toured there once. When yeah. I was in high school. I toured there, which is kind of funny because. Um, it was the right place for me to tour, but at the wrong time in my life and mm. closed down, obviously. So, yeah. so yes, uh, 
do you um obviously you know you're you're um you know really of course just really talented and really like organic in your artistry i'm curious are you thinking like down the road once you get out of school do you want to like do tours do you want to be an in-house audio producer do you want to produce for like commercial or movies or like what like what's what's the big dream for you yeah um well wow elliot um geez. i know it's a little <laughs> question uh, no I, it's I a good really question <laughs> Question. it's a good question though <laughs> yeah i think my dream has been evolving um like when i toured mcnally smith i knew that i want to do something with music and i know i like technology and i'm good with that so there will be something for me with those two merging and then you know i went to went to one year of college warper college in iowa and that the closest thing you can really do at liberal college for music is getting into like their media department majors and like journalism's a part of that though. And not really my thing, I found out. Then I went to <laughs> St. Thomas for a year and a COVID year, which is closer, mm. but still not what I really want. And so, yeah, the dream is evolving for sure. I think I would be incomplete if I didn't try to do shows at some point in my life. and probably in like the next year, if we're being honest, like why not just start? Um, awesome. I'm, I'm excited for whatever comes, but I want to, I want to be known as a person who's reliable, who's good to work with, whether it be as a performer or someone who's in a supporting role, because I, I know I love being a supporting role already. And I know that I will probably love being a performer too. So well, you know, I can definitely anything, see that anything. for you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, especially in, like, the EDM market, uh, house music, I mean, <laughs> I mean, and mixed with hip-hop, because to me, I don't know, from listening to your music, I think there are elements of all those styles and um, mm -hmm. hip-hop, and, and, and it's, yes. I mean, the house music makes EDM, it just makes, they just make bank, because there's no real upfront cost, you know, other than yeah. the lights and get your, your sound right, but really i mean to go on a tour you know you think about like avici and some of these guys it just made yeah. tons to, i mean a huge career yes huge career. that that's you're so right about that mm -hmm. yeah i've i've been putting some thought into what a poly bmn show would look like oh my god probably yeah. probably no lasers or fog but <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't say no if someone had a fog machine if you have a fog machine hit me up but like 20, <laughs> yeah, like 20 you heard <laughs> I'm imagining Paul and 20 burlesque dancers. Oh, really? They're very scandally clad. And they're all kind of that would, uh, Paul. <laughs> that would get the people in the door, but it, I don't know if it would send the right message. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends. <laughs> oh, speaking of message, Polly, is there a certain um, overall message that you like to convey? through your music to the audience? Yes, I think you'll find multiple depending on what song you're listening to. Mm -hmm. For a while, I was kind of restricting myself in thinking that everything I put out has to be serious and has to reflect my innermost character or soul or whatever. Um, but like right now I'm making a song about big butts, you know, because <laughs> I think everyone has to do it. And I think it's pretty good, and I could get into that a little bit, but I think you will find whatever the message might be, I would hope that it is a really genuine feeling one that is, yeah, it comes from a place where you can tell that it's truthful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I'm assuming that like other artists like myself, I like to leave the, you know, the message and let the song sit with the person or the audience yeah. that listens to it so they can relate to whatever um, in their life that mm -hmm. those emotions can bring up in them. Yes. Yes. I like, I, I love that. Um, I think you said that well, because Thanks. I do think there's a balance between when you have 
someone's attention in their ears and they want to they want to feel something from what you're telling them so making sure you're not stepping on that ability for them and their freedom in it um is something i like to think about i don't know really if you can put it into a concrete set of instructions for anyone but mm -hmm. as a fan of music myself of course i know how important that is um extremely extremely important so just the thought that I could provide someone else with that uh, feeling, whatever it might be, is a really cool thing to think about. Mm, awesome. Awesome. Speaking of being a fan of music, uh, which artists are you a fan of or which artists yeah. are you to, to create, to want to create? Uh, say that last part again. Uh, which artists inspire you to yeah. uh, want to create music? Yeah, um, in no particular order, Sade, I listen to a lot right now. Oh, yes. Love Sade. I, you, the common theme you'll find in a lot of the music I listen to is ladies with beautiful voices and mm -hmm. nice production to make a nice groove. So Sade is like that. Amy Winehouse is like that. Mm -hmm. Sid um, of the Internet Band is like that. Caliucci's I like um and then Men I Trust is an indie band they're actually playing here at the fine line this coming Saturday I'm going awesome love their, love their stuff and you didn't Sweet. dude <laughs> you can you should come you can come for sure no no it's gonna no. be a great show yeah no. you can you talk to me later <laughs> okay I'll we'll, we'll uh I'll, I'll hook you up and we'll yeah that'd be fun <laughs> Um, and then for rap, some of the first rap I got into was in, it was in middle school. Middle school was not the best time of my life. I'm a naturally shy person, or at least I was. So it took a while to Damn come here. out of, yeah, man, it took a long time to come out of that mold. And part of that was finding the music that spoke to me, but big crit is the rapper that has done the most for me. Mm. Um, just throughout my life. He has such an incredible discography. He's from Mississippi, Southern rapper. Um, and if you think anything I say is genuine and legit, you got to listen to Big Crit because he is just, yeah, you got to listen to know, but <laughs> highly recommend Big Crit. And all Southern rap in general, I think that Southern rap can be overlooked, but their discography is so important to music as a whole, especially mm -hmm. hip hop. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, yes, I, what you said about Southern rap being overlooked, because it seems like there's like East Coast and West Coast, but people yeah. like you often overlook the South. Yeah, qu quit hating the South, as they say. Um, <laughs> Andre 3000 said that at an awards mm -hmm. show. Actually, he didn't. He said the South got something to say. Quit hating the South. <laughs> Quit hating the South is a song by UGK. Anyway, that's true. Yeah. Southern rap, I love it. So that big, <laughs> big, um, big influence on me, and I think what I try to take from them specifically is uh, the swagger and the confidence. Uh, I think is something you can find in abundance with Southern rappers. And so that was helpful for me to both to listen to it and then to try to take pieces of it in my own work now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Are you ever um, surprised, Polly, when um, I don't know if you like look to see like which so some of your songs on Spotify have more views than others, but are you ever surprised um, of the music that you produce and put out there? what people relate to like if you're you know you put out a song and you're like yeah i like this song but you know i i just don't know and that could maybe be the you know most popular thing you put out are you ever surprised about what the fans like mm, you know that's a good question um as a relatively new artist with a very small following it's something i appreciate because fans are friends of mine for the most part and so having them come to me with 
parts of a song or lyrics or whatever it is that they noticed and was important to them is an incredible experience and mm. one that I cherish. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really look at the ones that I get the most streams. Um, cause once it's out, I think once it's out to the public, as long as they like something, um, I'm happy and whichever one is the most popular is cool with me because it, mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. That's less important than that it's available and good quality and mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, it seems like you you really are um, you speak truth into your artistry, and it feels to me like you you're not concerned so much with getting a million streams. It's more about the quality of the product and connecting with the audience or connecting yeah. with your yeah. your fans or your friends that are the ones that are really there. So it's and that's and that's the way to do it now because I mean it's like you have to engage uh, your fan mm -hmm. base and and it's like, yeah, you know, you could, you can, anyone can pay money to get streams, right? But it's like building that, that fan base from the ground up. I'm curious, yeah. um, Polly, like how, with your age range, for example, like what are people listening to? What do people connect with? Um, is, is it a particular style of music? Is it uh, a, a particular artist? Uh, you know what do you yeah see? i think i could speak to like the general some fat some things you might common qualities you might find in popular music thinking of like music that gets played at parties um it's gonna be explicit which isn't new but i would say like artists are increasingly less afraid to be very just specific in explicit content um, which I don't really have an opinion on either way. Uh, it can lead to some pretty shallow songs, but for a party, that's maybe what you need. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of repeated themes there, which if you listen to any rap, I guess it is nothing new. Well, I've been getting um, into Doge Cat, so yeah, Doge yeah. Cat, <laughs> yes, she's a great example because it's like it's very it's very up the top. It's like glittery, good pop, but it's also sexy and not afraid of really anything so yeah. i think there's you know, people like that awesome different uh music for different parts of life yeah oh, Sometimes that's so true fun just party songs that you don't have to be serious and think about it you know sometimes yeah. you want heavy emotional three hanky specials um <laughs> oh, I, was gonna ask. I thought it was two eggs and a hanky was that well that's that could be what too, you know we don't judge whatever I works know what are, i don't know what you guys are talking about <laughs> oh holly do you uh do you remember the most important piece of advice you've gotten from anyone in your life be it a fellow artist or you know a parent grandparent uh, the most important piece of advice that you've gotten yeah i I'm just going to say the first one that comes to mind, I was, it comes from my dad. I was with him in Idaho. I was probably not more than four years old and we were, I was just learning to ski and we were doing the bunny hill. We were on the conveyor belt to take you back up to the top of this like 10 foot bunny hill. And there were two girls in front of us giggling, um, completely. This is to show you, like I was a very sensitive kid like maybe more more than i can really explain why but that's just what it was so i thought they were laughing about me for whatever reason and which was not true but even if it was it's not the point uh the advice from my dad was that he kind of prefaced it he said you know this might sound this might sound weird or it might sound mean but nobody cares about you except for your family and your friends which i'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. a little bit but essentially uh, everyone is really self-absorbed, which is not a bad thing um, by any means. But not, not realizing that people care more about themselves than any one thing you might do, I have found to be it's a freeing idea. And it's helpful when you're 
expressing yourself deeply as I mm. like to do, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah, to awesome. not, not feel con, constrained by other people's uh, judgments or thoughts or opinions on, I mean, I, I feel like art, really good art does that all the time and it pushes the, the limits, yeah. right? Like yeah. art should yes. push the limits. That's the space to push limits. Um, and it, yeah, it seems like a lot of your material does that, you know, it's, you're not concerned with uh, one particular person's opinion Dude, about it. The, the thing I'm concerned with mostly is just that my mom listens to my music and I'll say some gross shit and <laughs> have to explain it to her one day or something. <laughs> that was probably, that was my biggest hang up musically is like, it's even in one of my songs, it's in, uh, I think it's birthday freestyle or I think that's what it's called towards the end. It's like, <laughs> I, I apologize for what I'm about to do and that rhyme, mom, don't listen. Okay. And then I go into something gross. Was that in love? Was that in Love Machine? <laughs> no, that's Birthday Freestyle. Oh, oh, Birthday Freestyle, yeah. But uh, you did release this. Uh, I'm playing it here, uh, Love Machine, which uh, was your newest single that came out here in 2020, right? Yeah. Um. No, that one was. It feels like so long ago now. Uh, if I'm surprised by any songs, I guess it's that one because. I like it, but I feel like it was pretty amateur, I guess. I don't know. I'm a harsh critic of myself. Well, it's got me jamming over here. But, <laughs> oh, <by all> means. <laughs> <laughs> and you also released um, uh, Live from the Corner, um, the full album in 2020. Now, how long did Live from the Corner take you? Um, to, to compose and write and uh did you wait to release it or was it one of those albums that you just you know yeah that that it? is that album is the perfect example of having resources and life and stories and breakups all compiled because those are all stories from like my first 17 18 years of life give mm. or take you know and being like okay I'm, I'm in a spot where i'm going to tell these stories and share them with everyone mm -hmm. so that really came to a head i would say i don't know eight months or less with a lot mm -hmm. of the stuff being done in three months as far as recording oh. and the mixing and mastering mm -hmm. because it's like once you get going and you you know it's like opening up a dam there's enough stuff there it's gonna go once you commit to opening it up so Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm curious to know, Polly, um, how did the COVID pandemic um, affect you as an artist and your writing? Did Were you able to tap into different emotions that you hadn't been able to feel or write about during that time? I would say so. Um, just to the degree that your life, your life is your art and your art is your life. Um, it definitely changed what I was doing. Getting sent home from school. Um, I mean, you could say that's like the first domino of the reason I'm going to IPR now instead of back to St. Thomas to try another year of learning Spanish and math. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But yeah, when I, when I went home in the pandemic from school, that's when I got my first pair of studio monitors, like some nice for me, some nice little JBLs. Awesome. So I was able to really start producing music and knowing, you know, making making changes to a mix or a beat and actually hearing what I'm doing instead of using these boys, which are old and not very good. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there was good and bad, absolutely. Well, it sounds like it worked out in your favor yeah. um, as, you know, going to IPR and... Uh, I think we need to get an update from you down the road after your first semester yes, and um, you do. see how that's, that's going. Um, so you told us about the most important piece of advice that you were given by your yeah. father when you were about four years old on the bunny Hills in uh, Idaho, I believe. What <laughs> uh, I still have to do the bunny Hills and I've never skied, but I would have to, if I ever do so. <laughs> Good luck. And uh, I know, no one's looking right? at you. 
Yeah. I don't know if I'll cross that off the bucket list someday, but um, what advice do you give, Paula? You're a young up and coming artist yourself who's been at this around five years or so you mentioned, uh, but what advice would you give to other artists, um, especially young artists like yourself who may want to pursue a career in music? Yeah, um, do it. And if you want to do it, do it because I think uh, there's a very, okay, starting over. When you think about, I'm going to go be a musician, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to tell my life stories, and I'm going to have everyone listen. That's a lot to commit to, but if you commit to just, I'm going to write this down, or I'm going to freestyle in the car on the way home, or I'm going to ask a buddy who makes beats if I can practice rapping, action you take is worth so much. So do it. Yeah, do it. And no one's going to do it for you either. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to know if it's good or not if you don't do it either. So yeah. mm -hmm. take take action. So you can, take you can the it. chance. Just, <laughs> yeah. just like Nike, just do it. Yeah, I like that. Nike's not sponsoring us, but uh, no, let's no, do no. it. <laughs> a sponsor. Like, sponsor. There's a brand. <laughs> like that one brand. <laughs> you mean LaCroix? That's right. LaCroix for all your bubbly yeah. needs. That's I don't like LaCroix. I don't, oh. I don't like LaCroix. Sorry. Wow. I can't do those. It's a hot take. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. So what's next for you, Polly, as as an artist? Yeah, I'm working on uh, I'm working on a few songs right now. Like what I said, right? Just get in the zone and go for it. Because mm -hmm. I have the time for it right now. So uh, I can't give a date or anything because I don't know myself, but I would hope in before October's over to put out a little EP. I think that's my goal mm -hmm. and get, awesome. get a few buddies involved with it too. Like my roommate, Woody and my friend, Eli, who's getting more and more into rapping. Um, Were you it's cool. It's cool to be like, I, you know, I consider myself a pretty humble um, as far as where I'm at in the career, but to these guys, I'm doing a ton and I've done a ton, which is cool to be a little mentor for them, you know? awesome you, yes you, you know you not um paul you not only um record and go to school and you're you're you know reading books and you're always you know um giving yourself tools to enhance your the richness of your brain so that you can do your art <laughs> but you are also uh you're also a dj am i right about this yes yeah and i dj weddings primarily every weekend through the company Midwest Sound. Midwest Sound for all your DJ entertainment needs. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> if you need Polly at BMN to come to your wedding, well, you know. I, I can I can play Brown Eye Girl. I can play <laughs> You Shook Me All Night Long. All that, all that stuff. I, we got We're it. You're going to let me dance it now. Woo! Sweet Caroline! Sweet Caroline! <laughs> Woo! Yep. <laughs> Yep. Oh, fun. Uh, How exciting. <laughs> well, uh, you know, um, I, my parents are, are uh, working with a uh, sort of a wedding ceremonies uh, mm -hmm. event space that we have in, in our old barn back on the family farm. So I might have to make a few phone calls if we start booking up this year. That would be a hefty mileage fee, my friend. <laughs> a hefty <laughs> mileage fee. Oh, you get room and board though. It's great. <laughs> okay. Okay. You think about it. You just think about it. <laughs> I'll think about it. Yeah. Oh man. My wedding next summer. Don't forget that. <laughs> okay. I want to get drunk there though. I don't want to work. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's right. Landon, there you go. You, you got your man right here. Well, you're going to be singing. I hope so. Oh, that's at least one or two songs. <laughs> can Paul, Paul come, yeah. Sure. Can Paul come in and, and we can do a duo thing or something? It's a. Woo! <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. So, what's that experience like then, Paul, to, to you know, to be out in the field? Um, is there a lot of like speaking of mileage? Is there a lot of travel involved? How far out do you go? Do you stick to Minnesota mainly or do you? Hop over to, you know, Wisconsin or Illinois, those areas. Yeah, they send you pretty much anywhere in about a like 250 mile radius from. It's out of Rosemont, but we'll just say the cities. Um, 
yeah this past saturday i was up in paqua lakes or paqua lakes i think is how you would pronounce it barn uh and then two weekends ago i was in um a really small town but it was like two three hour drives in the past two weekends mm-hmm. so it's very independent it's very very independent i'll say that again because it's twice independent <laughs> as far as it goes man which i love independent meaning that you work for the company and then but you independently go out into the field and and do the job yeah like that like we're independent contractors is oh, the know. is the setup for employment but once you pick up stuff you've got a support line to call but you're just on your own for okay the next 10 hours of work wow and how long have you been djing now polly Mm, four months i think four okay months. Yeah. so it's a relatively new gig but it's still yeah. you know in the music world and um yep. i'm sure you've learned a lot and probably the experience from being a dj has also helped you to grow as your own artist i'm sure as well yeah. right i would say so um in the public speaking part of the djing the emceeing aspect is totally helpful for Uh you know being around microphones no matter what you're doing awesome and to know what an audience likes too right i mean i would imagine just you know it probably gives you a sense especially when you're creating beats and things like that uh just being absorbed and immersed in that environment of of different styles of music i'd imagine with wedding djs don't they usually do a variety of like 60s 70s 80s you know, in 2000. Yeah. yeah, the way we do it is we have big packets of the most requested stuff that's been built up over, like this company has been doing it for 40 years. So they've got you as far as what music to play. And then within all those popular songs are highlighted ones, which are the silver bullets. So if you, <laughs> you need a song, then you whew, silver bullet <laughs> to slay the vampire crowd or whatever that's implying. Yes. So I have to ask, what is your favorite song to play as a DJ, whether you play it on your own or someone requests it? It's Staying Alive is probably undefeated for me. Um, Awesome. It's so catchy. It's ridiculous. (laughs) I don't know how they did it, but that is a great song. You can't not sing it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm sure you just have to feed off the audience as well, um, off yeah. the energy of, of the crowd at a wedding when you're DJing and those silver bullet songs come on and everyone's like having a good time and mm-hmm. probably three sheets to the wind and I'm sure you're just like, woo Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm hyped up with them and sometimes I'm just faking a smile and just like we got another hour here but yes the countdown is on (laughs) it's just it's funny no matter what you do work is work at least for a portion of that time you're doing it even if it's dancing and having a good time Mm. so what is what does mom say about about this music career is she supportive mom and dad are they Uh, of course, oh, I know yeah. your mother. I know she's a wonderful, awesome woman. So, yeah. Yeah, they're they're the coolest, um, and they're both creatively active people. Um, my dad was in he was in a band with his buddies actually for many years, and they did original stuff, uh, and they also did covers. Like they play oh, bar awesome. shows on like you know one weekend a month, but that was their thing together. Fun. So it was cool to grow up around a little bit. So music was in your family then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, my mom has a great voice. She sang at um, St. Olaf College in their choir, which is a very prestigious choir, if you don't know. And yeah, music, music around the house when I was growing up all the time. A lot of African stuff, a lot of like, you know, the Gypsy Kings, which is a uh, it's a guitar based, it's like 
Spanish, I think, or they're technically like French on the border there. A lot of good rhythm. Uh, Bob Marley was in the house. My dad would listen to jazz a lot, Miles Davis in the backyard. So, hmm. oh, and they would sing to me. They would sing to me like every night too before bed. So they awesome. def they definitely get a big scoop of credit for who I am today as far as music. Well, you grew up in a rich environment, rich music and, and classical yeah. music and things like that too. So that's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. It's good. Well versed, well versed. Thank mom and dad, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <it> probably will. <laughs> oh man. So okay. You have a bed of experience creating on your own. Have you gotten a chance to um, work with any like uh, professional touring groups or is that something like that you'd want to do down the, down the road, like uh, jump on board as either a sound engineer or um, maybe you're a part of the band or being a DJ? Mm -hmm. like, like, uh, it, it seems like you are a type of person that likes community um, type events, so. Yeah. Yes, um, I want to try. I want to try it all. I think is where I'm at right now, and then I'll figure out what I like the most. Um, but yeah, like working with you, as I said before, uh, is a really good way to figure out if I, because like I'd known I enjoy audio engineering in general, but working on an actual project and being responsible is a different thing than just enjoying it as a hobby. So experiences like that are what I want to keep collecting and see where mm -hmm. it goes. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I want to piggyback off of Elliot's question. Um, even though you're very young in your musical career so far, Polly, um, what, what do you want to do that you haven't done yet? Mm. Mm, uh, besides, besides live stuff, I want to, put out music that is quality wise, um, indistinguishable from any professionally produced music you could find and you would listen to day to day. Cause you can get close. Um, and part of it is just what I don't know yet, but having the proper acoustic environment, et cetera, et cetera, is something I haven't quite had yet. And I'm very excited to see what I can do with that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm very excited as well to see after, you know, your uh, time at IPR, the uh, new music that you'll put out after that yeah. as well, after you learn all this stuff that you were just talking about. So that'll be oh, interesting yeah. for your fans to, uh, to watch and see you evolve over the years as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting nowadays too, because like you were saying earlier, Paul, you can, uh, you can literally build an entire catalog off of just your computer with creating sound beats or uh, MIDI files, well, whether it be keyboard or you know mm -hmm. drum samples, things like this. Um, I think of like Billie Eilish, who uh, her and her brother um, got the Grammy for number one album of the year, and they did everything yeah. in their bedroom, you know. And yeah. I think nowadays it's like that's how most of it is done, you know. Yeah, there's, I mean, for any, anything you might think is like the new easy way to do something, there's probably someone who is like five years old, who is already on to the next thing. <laughs> um, so they learn fast. It's happening. Yeah. It keeps on happening. You gotta, you gotta teach, uh, you know, Landon and I, all the, the tricks of the trade, cause we're old school boys. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I'm um, for that. <laughs> Elliot, the other day when I, I showed you a plugin which goes into your Ableton or digital audio workstation, it's called Arcade, and you buy it for a year or a subscription, but they have a bunch of packs of samples that you trigger with uh, your keyboard. And what did you think of that? Because to me, that is like, wow, this is new and cheating almost. Yeah, it, it blew my mind, first of all. Um, I thought it was brilliant. It was like, it was a totally different way of producing something or, or creating sounds because I literally sat at the keyboard and Paul was on the other side of the couch and 
he was plugged into our PA system and he says, okay, now just hit a note. And I hit a note on the keyboard and all of a sudden it's like seventies funk or something. Wow, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love you it. The note and then it's a whole orchestration. I just, I don't know if it was cheating necessarily to me or, but it felt I had, I just didn't know how to even, you know, build off of that because each each note had a different sound and a different setting so yeah. i think to me it felt a lot more like you just have to play with it and mm -hmm. see what it produces um but i i liked it i thought it was pretty pretty fantastic actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah. De a totally different way of producing than i've ever done but mm -hmm. but it, that's the amazing thing now you can i mean technology can can really um break down uh, the boundaries too so that's yes yeah. yeah well said yeah. <laughs> do you ever just feel like paul's interviewing us <laughs> hmm. i hope not you guys are the hosts no <laughs> smart as a whip that kid <laughs> oh my goodness well i i think it was fate that you two just met what two and a half months ago probably three months yeah, ago yeah, yeah dude uh what's our anniversary dude <laughs> oh happy anniversary man Don't no no I said, I said what is oh. it i was asking if you knew because i don't i mean i do but i'm checking if you do <laughs> the actual date uh no, I'm, I'm not. i just remember it was like mid mid july wasn't it i thought yeah mid july yeah. a few weeks before the mid to late probably july. it was probably like the 24th or the 17th because i think it wow. was a saturday yeah. so maybe a sunday morning probably the 18th or the wow. 25th or something let's Is say 18th any, uh, two or three month itch coming up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. If there is, I'm sure a song could come out of it. <laughs> yeah. That's true, though. That is true. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Well, Paul, mm -hmm. I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. But I was thinking, um, was, is there anything else you would like to, to speak your mind of uh, just in, in terms of like, uh the artistry uh being a producer or a sound engineer um you know for those of course that are thinking about getting into the profession but maybe are just a little tentative or don't know where to begin like how how did you begin how did i begin um i think i had a lot of just natural inclinations to this type of life and doing these things. So if you feel the same way, don't discount those things, even if it's just being good at tapping out rhythms or mm. uh, actually knowing how to like hook up TVs and shit like that, because um, troubleshooting is a huge part of music, in my opinion, and technology. Mm. Yeah, I would probably recycle my other advice would be take action, say yes to things, ask for help, meet people. And I think when you're in, when your intent is genuine, it will come back to you in a positive mm. way. Awesome. Well said. Well said. Thank you. I have one, one yeah. last question. What would you like to say to uh, your audience, the fans that listen uh, to your music and uh, spread the word about you and your music? Yeah. Well, and two parts, if you already listened to me, um, what's up? How you doing? You should come hang out with me. We're probably friends already. But if you don't know me, uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, there's, I wouldn't say there's no music without people to listen to it, but mm -hmm. there really isn't anything if you don't have people to listen to it. So mm -hmm. thanks awesome. for that. And if you want to listen to me, you can find me on Spotify. You can find me on Apple Music, YouTube Music, any music platform. It's Pauly B M N, and it's on the Zoom screen right here. It's probably mm -hmm. probably somewhere else too. If these guys can host me well, 
So awesome. check it out. I'll yeah. have new stuff. I've got stuff that can be listened to now and new stuff on the way. Sweet. Well, thank you so very much, Polly, for yeah. your time and um, enlightening us with your music and your artistry and giving all the good advice that you've given. We'd have uh, really enjoyed having you on the show tonight. Oh, thank you both. I had a great time. Oh, you're very welcome. And make sure to check out Polly BMN on all social platforms. And uh, let's blow this kid up. <laughs> yes, don't forget Do us it. when you're famous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, I'll forget all about you the moment I do. Oh, no, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> on, just... please. We love you, Polly. We love Woo! you. Woo! Yeah, also, first... ladies, you know, he might be taken. I don't know. You're going to have to fight over him. I'm sorry. And just a disclaimer, you know, he's kind of a hot item. So. <laughs> yeah. What he said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get a wild oh, time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, Paul. Thank you so much for coming on board. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Good night. I'll see you guys Good next night. time here Thanks. on the Earth's Journey Podcast. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>